I'm Eric Wielander, welcome back to my channel. So Akara just released a new indoor HomeKit Secure video camera, the E1, and it's a big step forward in a lot of ways, but I also think there's a case or two where you might still wanna consider Akara's older cameras. And thanks to Akara for sending me this camera with early access, free of charge. And by the way, I also, without talking to them, strapped it to a battery and made it wireless, but let me explain why I did that in just a minute. But first, let's run through some of the features and specs of this new camera. But first, let's run down some of the new features and specs. It has a 2K sensor with a 2.0 aperture lens, and it can pan and tilt using a car's app. It has Bluetooth 5.2 for easy pairing, and it also has local video storage where you can record the video to a micro SD card. And one of the most interesting new features of this camera is that it supports Wi-Fi 6 with WPA3 security, which should hopefully result in some more reliable wireless connections compared to maybe some other HomeKit cameras. In the box, you get, of course, the camera, as well as a removable wall or ceiling mount. It includes a quarter 20 tripod mount, which then adds some flexibility in where and how you mount it. It also comes with a USB-A to C cable because you need to power the camera with USB-C, but there's no power adapter in the box. Now, this is not the first time Akara has shipped a device without an actual power adapter, and there are plenty of companies out there in tech doing this these days, but you'll need to find your own way to supply five volts of power via USB-C, either with the supplied cable or one you already have on hand. You might already have an extra USB-C power brick lying around, but as long as you need to get a power adapter for this camera, why not get something like the Anker 65 watt GAN power bank? Bear with me here. Even if you think that whole idea of making this camera wireless is crazy and you're never gonna do it, I still think it's a useful way to look at what makes this camera unique, whether or not you're ever gonna connect it to a battery. Now, I wanna give credit to Club Max Stories and the amazing newsletter over there. I've been reading Federico Batici, John Voorhees, and all of the great writers over at maxstories.net for years now, and I first heard about this idea in the Club Max Stories newsletter, but I wanted to take it a step further. This specific battery has a power plug built in so I can just plug it into the wall and there is also my wall mount for the camera because I attached the mount for the camera onto the battery. So all you have to do to take this camera with you is just pull it out from the wall and it's one main unit. So then with the help of some 3M command strips and a little bit of gaffer's tape, I hooked the camera up to the battery. And at first I kind of approached this more like an experiment that I was just kind of seeing what's possible. And I was a little skeptical about if I'd actually find this wireless camera useful but over the past couple weeks, I've had situations where it's been pretty useful to just remove this camera from the wall, put it somewhere else in the house, let's say to keep an eye on the kids, or maybe for you it could be for a pet like a dog, and then I just open up the live view on my Mac or my iPad, and I can hear live audio of what's going on there, as well as then talk through the mic to relay instructions to the kids or whatever. And of course, this camera isn't rated for outdoors, but on a nice day when it's not raining, you could take it outside with this battery and use it there. But I should also be clear that I would never intend for this to be a replacement for a baby monitor, but that's a topic for another video. Now, if you're trying to find the right camera angle that you want or need to adjust it slightly for any reason, the pan and tilt feature can be really handy. Whether it's for my battery setup where I've actually mounted the camera sideways and then I turn the camera so it can look out the side or you just want to see more of something just outside of the field of view of your camera you open up the Akara app and you can adjust the angle of the camera there and the angle you adjust there appears everywhere including Apple's home app now it's a bummer that there's no controls to adjust this camera in the home app but that's out of Akara's control one of the downsides of my little battery setup, which gets to one of the downsides or maybe positives of this camera, is that when I unplug my battery mount from the wall or then plug it back in, 
There's something about the circuitry that I think changes the power uh, source and that causes the camera to lose power briefly and then it restarts. And it's fine because it just reboots right back to where I had it set with the pan and tilt settings before. So I don't really see too much of an issue there. But one other reason I'm okay with that is because I'm not using this camera as a Zigbee hub for Acara sensors because this camera can't do that. If you're like me, you might have a dedicated Acara hub already like the M2 or the M1S to connect your sensors to your smart home. But Acara cameras like the G2H Pro and the G3 have long been advertised as Zigbee hubs where you can buy this camera and then you get access to all of these less expensive sensors from Acara which can save you a lot of money on building out your smart home. I love Acara's hubs and sensors but They've been making more and more products like the new Dorn window sensor they have, as well as the millimeter wave sensor that don't require this Zigbee hub. They work through thread or Wi-Fi, other wireless means. And I don't think that this means that Acara is getting away from Zigbee products, but it certainly doesn't seem to be where their innovation is right now. It's in other products. And that's fine by me. I think there's some added focus to that this is a camera and just a camera rather than also being this smart home hub, not to mention that they're passing some of the savings of this onto you by making this camera a little bit cheaper. Although I should caveat that I'm recording this before the camera's been officially released, so prices are always subject to change. Get off my lawn. Primarily, the thing that stands out to me is the continued support of HomeKit Secure Video from Acara. This is a great camera for using with HomeKit Secure Video, and that's Apple's built-in video recording service for storing clips in your iCloud account for you to reference later, which is included as long as you're paying for one of the iCloud Plus plans. And the other benefit is storage of those video clips does not count against your iCloud storage quota. It just matches with the number of cameras you can record, sort of parallels different iCloud plans. And one of the things HomeKit Secure your video does to make cameras like this really useful is that you can set it in detect activity mode, which means that inside of HomeKit and the Home app, this camera acts as a motion sensor in that mode. And then you can set it so that when everybody leaves the home, that's when it starts recording video and clips. Because of course, those are the times you're gonna want clips of events. Now, if you've heard me talk about HomeKit Secure Video before, you might have heard me complain about other cameras falling off of Wi-Fi and not staying connected. Now, I've only had this camera for a few weeks now, but it hasn't had any drops in my experience. The network performance has been very solid. Maybe that's a credit to the Wi-Fi 6 connection. Maybe that's something else a car is doing, which is good engineering and software. Maybe it's recent bug fixes and improvements in iOS 17 on Apple's end. But it's been great so far and hopefully that will continue. And the video recording quality is solid. You know, it's it's nothing mind blowing or uh, industry leading, but it's right up there with the G2H Pro and gives you a clear image of what you're trying to see, whether that's at night with black and white infrared or during the day with color. Now, is this the right camera for you? Well, of course, if you want a Zigbee hub with your camera, then I would still look at the G2H Pro. I think it's still a competitive camera, especially if you want that feature. But overall, I think that this is the new HomeKit camera to get for most people. For my experience, experience so far, it's been reliable with its network connectivity. It supports HomeKit Secure Video, which comes with a lot of great features for an indoor camera like this. And I do find the pan and tilt to be a helpful feature even if you can't access it inside of the home app. But that doesn't mean there aren't ways I'd like to see a car improve their camera lineup over time. The first, of course, is that I think this kind of battery concept is pretty cool and having them integrate it at the factory with a lithium ion battery would be great to have a battery backup for one of your cameras like this. They already have local recording to a micro SD card. So then, you know, if your internet and your power goes out, you still have a way that's recording videos, albeit locally to the camera. Not to mention the sort of mobile option that I use where I can carry it around the house to briefly monitor or use it in other places. Now, the other side of this is Acara adds lots of features to their products, as do a lot of tech companies. But 
at the same time, I think there's also a benefit to focusing on a smaller set of features. I love products that I can just get that do one thing, I can quickly understand what it does, and it takes care of that very well. And this camera has all these extra features that we haven't even gotten to in this review, like on-device image detection and all kinds of fancy things in the Acara app. And I would just rather see Acara make a camera or set of cameras just dedicated to HomeKit Secure Video and is just focusing on reliability and getting a great picture into that 1080p image that goes up to iCloud. And I think removing the Zigbee hub from this camera is a step in a direction where I think that making a more simple, more refined camera could be something that would be a great addition to the Acara lineup over time. Let me know what you think about this camera in the comments below. Are you excited for it? What do you think about my ideas of where I'd like to see Akara take all of this in the future? Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Thanks again so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.